This is the Canon EF 100-300mm f.6 L-series lens. If you've never heard of this lens, it's because it's an ancient lens. Now, it's not actually ancient, but in terms of technology, it's pretty old. This thing is 36 years old, first being released in 1987. In fact, it is one of the very first zoom lenses to come out with the then brand new Canon EOS camera system. Now, I got this lens about two and a half years ago from my good friend Ben, and I've tested it out a few times over the years, and I've gotten images such as these. Now, even with this lens being eight years older than I am, its image quality is actually pretty decent. But how does it actually feel to use? Well, honestly, not that great. It's quite a weird lens and is extremely clunky, especially when compared to modern lenses. As you can see, it uses a push-pull design when going from 100 to 300 millimeters, and there's no locking feature like there is with newer push-pull lens designs. So unless you have it fairly stable and at a horizontal position, it tends to float from one focal length to another. Pretty obnoxious. A couple years ago, I tried using this lens to take a photo of the full moon and I couldn't get it to stay at 300 millimeters because it just kept falling back down to 100 millimeters. Another thing that sucks is the autofocus. Now the autofocus works eventually, but it often takes way too long for it to hunt for its focus point and is the noisiest autofocusing system I've ever heard in my life. It sounds like the motor is filled with sand and is just grinding to nothing. It's an incredibly slow piece of equipment, and honestly, sometimes it's easier just to use the manual focus. So why would I waste my time using this clunky, almost useless piece of camera history? Just because I like torturing myself. And I also just have a deep love for really old stuff like this. Anyway, so we have a storm moving through northern Utah right now, and I want to take this thing for a little spin up American Fork Canyon. It's fall time, the fall colors are looking great up that canyon, and I want to see if we can get some cool telephoto shots with that storm moving through and the fall colors and see what kind of cool abstract or just telephoto stuff we can get. So let's make our way up the canyon now. So the reason I wanted to come up to American Fork Canyon um, out of all canyons is um, when it rains up American Fork Canyon, the, all the pine trees up here emit this, uh, like a lot of moisture and a lot of fog. So I, I don't know the science about it, but I, there's something about when the trees up here, specifically the pine trees, uh, when they collect water, they push a lot of it out of their, uh, their pine needles, I guess. I don't know if it's the needle. I don't know what it is. I'm not an expert on this, but they push a lot of moisture out and spit a bunch of fog into the air and so I'm hoping to maybe catch some of that with the uh, with the surrounding fall leaves so it also snowed and as I mentioned before so um, it's looking really cool up here there's a lot of fog and there's just so much snow and dark clouds that are covering the mountains and it looks it looks really cool so it's snowed a couple times in Utah already and I haven't had a chance to really participate in the uh, the, the fall snow combo that we've been getting so I'm happy to, to finally get up here and get a little part of that so but I've got a spot in mind that we're going to the colors look so good right now and yeah I'm really excited so we'll be there in about I don't know, five minutes Okay, so I got a cool little shot here. There's this little patch of uh, yellow aspens sitting in the middle of these pine trees, and it looks really cool. So I'm zoomed in. I think I'm at, I'm at 135 millimeters, and yeah, I like this this shot a lot. There's a lot of fog coming up around the uh, the aspens, and it just looks really, really freaking cool. So this is yeah, this is awesome. So I think I'm going to zoom in to 300 here, and yeah, get a really tight shot of those. So, there's that autofocus making the horrible, horrible grinding sound again. Right now I have this set to f11 and shutter speed of 1 over 25 at ISO 250, and then I have it on a two second timer. So, 
Hopefully that'll be good. Two second timer. Sweet. Ah, that's cool. I like that. I think this photo is really cool, but like I've done before, I decided to crop it. I think this little square composition just works a little bit better for this particular photograph. Uh, I'm gonna turn and shoot this way. That is really cool. Oh my gosh, it's so loud and annoying. I don't know that focus direction. There we go. Okay, two second timer. I don't really have much to say about these next two photographs. I just think they're really good. Seriously, these are some of my favorite fall photos and just fog photos I've ever taken. I'm gonna go vertical. Okay, so I got this really cool vertical shot um, lined up. I've kind of got this like, it's actually, I'm gonna take a shot before the fog goes away. Oh, that's neat. So I've got this like cliff face that has all these like kind of orangey yellow um, bits of uh, scrub oak on it. And then it's kind of layered behind that with a few little patches of like foggy pine trees and it looks so cool. I can't even describe how jazzed I am about this one. something just a little bit more abstract up here. I'm curious to see how these images turn out. So, see if this lens holds up at all. Part of me's doubtful. We're also combining this with a uh, old camera. So, we're using just a lot of old equipment right here. So, this is basically just turning into a test of seeing if old equipment is, still stands up. There's a spot up here on the tree line where it kind of turns from all these like orange and yellow pieces of scrub oak into uh, snow-covered pine trees. So it's really cool. I'm trying to split the composition so it's like half snow and then half, um, half not snow. So, oh, we got some sunlight coming in. Maybe this would be kind of cool. I like this photo a lot. I think it's pretty basic as far as composition, but I think it's kind of cool. This photo makes me feel like my eyes are being clawed out, but that makes it art, right? Well, I think that's gonna do it for this spot, so. Um, I have one more photo I'm going to snag real quick, and then I'm going to run up to another spot. Um, I've got a couple more spots in mind, actually, so uh, we'll see how far we get. So we've got a little bit of snow coming in again, so we will see. So I made it to my next spot, but um, all the trees that I was hoping to get images of are dead. So, I mean, there's a lot here to shoot um, as far as like color goes, but um, not as far as good telephoto shots go. So all the trees that I was, like I said, that I had my eye on that are just out, out here are pretty much all dead. So uh, I'm gonna keep going, but we're getting up into this uh, snow um, area, so area i don't know i can't think of what it's called um the snow line the tree line i have no idea but we're gonna keep moving on so as i was getting ready to leave i uh noticed the clouds clear and reveal a pretty cool little composition here so there's this spot on the mountain where all this snow is falling down it almost looks like an avalanche and it's kind of blending into all these cool colors um there's all these avalanche or all these aspens excuse me that are coming up the mountain and meeting that that little avalanche area so I uh, got the camera back out. I'm shooting a couple shots of that. There's also some some light that's peeking through the top of the mountain, and it's it's really cool. So great spot. Glad I glad I ended up staying here. So, so these next few photos that I'm gonna show here are some of my favorites from the entire evening. And I gotta say, 
I kind of feel like I'm on a winning streak today. I love how layered this one feels with the trees on the bottom and the crisscrossing mountain ridges. This one's just so ethereal feeling and I, I love the mood. This one's fine, I guess, but I don't know. Can't win them all. I just had to park right where there's a big giant mud puddle right here. Of course. Yeah. Well, that was a uh, very muddy ride up to this, uh, this next spot. Um, I've got a couple places that I'm going to check out here. So we've got a little bit of light peeking through, um, which I think is great. And I've got a little spot over here. There's some really bright aspens um, that I'm going to go get some, some tight shots with, with the, uh, the long lens. And then there's one spot that we've been to before in a previous video. So you'll recognize it here in a, uh, in a minute, but uh, we're going to hit this first and then head up to that next spot. So, and then we'll talk about this lens. So this is the whole point of this video was, was using this, uh, this old ancient lens, but, uh, we haven't talked about it much yet since we've been out shooting. So, uh, we'll talk about it when we get up to the, uh, the next spot. A little sunlight yes oh <laughs> oh that's amazing that was perfect that was perfect timing holy crap I could not have been any more lucky with that oh it's going away let's see if I can get a vertical let's see if I can get a vertical oh I love that so much oh, this is this turned out to be such a good spot. Holy crap. Oh, this is so cool. I hope these are good. I hope these are turning out really good. They look like they're turning out good, but you never know. All right, well, we lost that little bit of light, so that was perfect. That really was just absolutely perfect. Perfect. It's like 30 degrees up here, by the way, so my, my lips are starting to get a little bit numb. And if you've ever seen any of our our older videos from last winter, uh, you know that I apparently struggle to speak when it's cold. So get ready for that again. Okay, I'm going to get one more close up of this. I might go yeah, we'll do one more vertical shot here. That's cool. I really like that. Yeah, these are great. I love this. I love the spot. So, um, Basically what I'm looking at is I, I just have like a patch of aspens right here and they're really really bright and they kind of come towards me in, in somewhat of a V so the, uh, the the aspens right in the very front of that V are a little bit brighter than everything behind them so it, it's kind of cool it kind of makes for a cool effect but um, that might be everything I can get at this spot so I'm going to head up the mountain a little bit further and go to my next one. My favorite thing about this one is that blue and orange contrast with the mountains in the back and the trees. I actually found one more cool shot. So there's like all this scraggly looking kind of, I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it other than it just looks like little like witch fingers um, on these trees over here. And it's kind of, they're lit up. And then behind them is the, uh, that really dark, like moody blue sky. And it looks really cool, so. <laughs> that's neat. That's that's really cool. And this is just the perfect shot for the upcoming Halloween holiday. Gosh, this is so cool. I was so worried that I was going to miss out on on all this cool fall color, but I yeah, this is this is making up for it. So cuz this is this is great. So after spending maybe way too much time at this location, I got packed up and made my way back to the car. I got everything loaded up and started heading up the mountain to my next and final spot for this evening. This next spot would end up being my favorite for the evening and where I got my favorite photos of this entire night.
Okay, so we made it to our last spot. And if you watched, um, I think our video from, I think three weeks ago, I came up here and scattered out this area um, for future fall colors. And so if you watch that video, you might recognize this place. So when I came up that time, everything was still pretty green. So we couldn't shoot then, but now we're like right at peak. This spot just looks so, so dang good right now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get shooting. So we've got all these yellow aspens right here, this kind of field of, of yellow after that. Then as you can see right on Tippinogus, there's this really, really cool um, like strip of clouds that, that's flowing right in front of it. And it just looks so, so dang neat. It's, good. <laughs> it's so cool. Ah, I love this. I love this so much. Okay, I'm gonna get to shooting. So we're gonna talk about that really obnoxious lens here in just a second, but make sure you stay to the end to see all the photos that I got here, cause you're not gonna wanna miss them. I think they're, they're pretty great. Oh man, that is cool. Oh, that noise. Oh man. Okay, let's talk about this lens. Um, so this thing is a giant um, pain in the butt to use. So it's, it is so slow. And I mean, you've seen the autofocus. The autofocus is so bad. It just like screeches out and then it screeches focusing back in. And it's so slow and it's just, it's, a, it's kind of a pain uh, to use. And yeah, it's so slow. There was a moment shooting earlier where there was some fog moving in and it was like the right, I needed it to go at like this, the, this exact time. And I needed to be really precise with the autofocus. And it just was, and oh my gosh, it was kind of irritating. But my other concern is, I don't know how sharp everything's gonna be. I feel like the, ooh, hold on one second. This is so cool. Seriously, this is amazing. But so my, my other concern with this is I feel like the photos are probably gonna be a little too soft. Um, and nothing that can't be fixed in, in Photoshop and in Lightroom, but um, it's just when I, when I zoom in on the images that I've taken on the back of the camera, it just looks really soft. And I mean, part of that is, you know, everything's so far away. We're shooting at 300 millimeters, so it's not gonna be, you know, exactly how you're thinking it's gonna look. But it's just, it's an old lens, so, these older lenses just aren't as sharp as, as newer stuff. So, um, even though this was probably, you know, top of the line 35 years ago, it's just, it's not the same as, as what is out now. So, but I think it's still, it's still doable. It still works. So, um, we'll see when we get back. You, you would have seen a lot of the images at this point, but we'll see when we get back into, uh, into the office and, and once I start editing these, how they, how they look. But as for right now, I'm gonna shoot a couple more photos and I'm gonna head down the mountain. So I gotta get back home and I've got some stuff I got going on tonight. So, um, but in the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I hope that you really enjoy these videos. Uh, they're super fun for me to make and, and they give me a really good excuse to come out and take photos. And I mean, this is my favorite thing. This is my full-time job. So I, I love this so, so much. And I hope that you, enjoy watching these videos as much as I enjoy making them. So, uh, but make sure you subscribe, like, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about, about this lens. If you've ever used this before, let me know. And let me know your experience. Let me know what you think about the photos as always. And we will catch you next time. Hope you have a good one. Bye.